back. This is Kimberly Swanner with KimandCaboodle.com and VizArt Center in Rockville, Maryland. And in our last video, video part one of making a hand-built uh, butter dish, you can hear I'm in the facility, which is near a uh, fire department actually, so uh, that is just one of those things we have to put up with. But in our last um, video, we made the tray for the butter dish. It has been sitting out, it's now bone dry. Uh, and now we are going to make the lid for the butter dish. Uh, I used my stencils that I made, uh, which I showed you in the last film. This was for the uh, bottom part. And then this part is for the sides. And then I used a whole side. I made a fourth one of these and then just cut it down to measure for the uh, two by two uh, on the other side. So I've got my two ends and then my three pieces that are for the lid. And this is for making a box very simple box. Boxes are all made pretty much the same way. Um, just, you know, you choose your heights, lengths, widths, and all that stuff. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pick my middle piece because my middle piece can be any of these that I like. I'm going to go ahead and just use the one that's literally in the middle. Um, put these over to the side and I'm going to turn this over. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is because this has a pattern, I actually want to take my, um, paring knife that you saw in the last video. Make sure it's pretty clean. We don't want any debris. And I'm going to very carefully cut this at about a 45 degree angle to bevel it. And we're going to bevel all of the sides of our pieces like this. Uh, now you can actually use um, your fingers if you want to kind of just press that does potentially make things a little bit uneven because it squeezes the clay. Um, so I do find using a, a paring knife a little bit easier. Using that paring knife, because remember the, the whole point of this is that we're using things from home. So trying to not use typical, I mean any tool, anything can be a tool in ceramics. So you don't have to buy tools from a ceramic store to, uh, you know, do ceramics. There are some ceramic specific tools like the metal rib that make things a lot easier, but anything can become a tool, make your own tools, you know, work with the things that make you happy and comfortable. Plenty of people make their own tools. So I don't know if you can see how that like comes to very nice bevel. Um, video a little bit different today because last time uh, I forgot my iPad, so we were filming with my phone. Um, but today we got the iPad, so we get a little bit of a better view, um, which is great for something that's, you know, going to involve a little bit more detail work, like a box. Uh, but still just going to cut these. I tried to do as much prep work as possible before starting the video um, so that we don't have to watch all that again. Watch video one if you're like, hey, how the heck did she put that pattern on? or hey, how did she use a stencil and all that stuff. Um, all those things covered in video one. Um, but this is video two, welcome to video two. Um, a bit warm today. Uh, well, not like outside, but in the studio. So I think the sun's coming in through the windows, which is nice, but that is why I might be pausing from time to time to get a drink of water. So if you hear like water bottle crinkling and stuff, that's maybe a thing that's gonna happen. Just babbling while I finish cutting all of these because we wanna cut all of them. Um, but yeah, you know, making boxes is fun. You wanna work in the hard slab, not the soft slab. So this clay did get a little bit of time to sit out. Remember, you don't want to make a box out of clay that you just um, rolled out. It's way too soft. You need to have clay that can stand on its own. It's got to be able to, once it's you know built up into its shape, it's got to be able to withstand its own weight. Um, and if not withstand its own weight, be prepared to make some, I like to call it scaffolding to to hold it up whether that's with like tubes of like used toilet paper rolls or paper towel rolls uh, or you know wads of newspaper tissue paper whatever extra balls of clay that have been dried out 
uh, whatever you want to use. I just did that one backwards, so this is going to be interesting. I'm going to try and just cut a little bit straight on that. That's what happens when you don't pay attention to what you're doing, which I'm sometimes guilty of. Um, but yeah, make sure that if your clay's too soft, you're either letting it dry out or you are uh, prepared to compensate for it with other ways like scaffolding and things. Um, when we say hard slab uh, in ceramics, it's still flexible, so it could still bend, but it's, it's drying, it's, it's much more firm, it's not um, floppy, and uh, it is on the verge of being dry enough that it can crack. So those are things you want to be very careful of. You've got to find that perfect spot to hand build in. Um, and uh, that can be tricky, takes time. So again, you see my little bevels. They don't have to be like super perfect. You can buy beveling tools that are like little T-squares with string on them. But um, again, working from home. Excuse me. All right, so now that I've got this all beveled out, I'm gonna set some things aside so that they're out of my way. This is my center. And I'm gonna go ahead and put on one of the sides. So I'll pick the one that I just did. Make sure everything kind of measures up. Excellent. Notice how because of those bevels, this is gonna sit together pretty tightly, really nice. And on the other side, which is the reason why I beveled it, it's gonna to come together really nice and tight too. And actually what my goal is, is that we don't wanna to have to do too much fusing with wet clay on this side where the pattern is, because I don't wanna lose my pattern if I can, if I can avoid it. Uh, I wanna avoid losing that pattern. So I'm gonna use, I could use a fork, um, but the fork's a little bit, I'm like holding this up like, like you all can see. I, I could use this fork, um, but it's, it's really big. Uh, the, the fork prongs are really big. So I'm not gonna actually use the fork even though we had that out um, last time. I am gonna use, however, the uh, plastic knife because the serration on it is really tiny, perfect for doing scoring, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do little, little bitty reiki marks. Clean that off. More little reiki marks. Let me see if I can hold that up enough so that you can see those little serrations. That's scoring. And then I have a new tool today, the paintbrush. Didn't think to grab it last time. I do have my sponge still, but let's use the paintbrush. And so I'm gonna take just a little bit of water there, get that nice and hydrated, both sides. If you don't have a paintbrush, a Q-tip works great. Again, sponge is fine. I happen to have paintbrushes at home. So now I'm gonna squeeze those together very gently and set it upright. So this is what I mean kind of by hard slab is that as a good hard slab, eventually, once I get this squished together, this will support its own weight and stand up on its own. Now it's it's just, you know, only being barely supported by that, um, that, that stickiness of the slip, but eventually I won't even have to worry about it. I've got little scraps here to the side. I'm gonna get those super, super wet they're very thin from when I cut the, the bevels, which is great. Normally I make snakes, but since these bevel pieces are ready to go, and I'm gonna squish these bevel pieces in here very gently, push them in with my finger right into that crack to seal that. Now, if I didn't have those little bevel, bevel, bevel scraps, wow, I'm, I'm just like par for the course here on talking. Um, if I didn't have the little scraps from beveling, I could make little snakes out of coils, just like we did in the last video for our supports. I'm gonna take the end of the paintbrush here and just gently use that to push that clay in, supporting my other side, making sure I've got lots of support. Dipping that, dipping these little nice thin scraps into the water, letting the water hydrate them. Some people prefer to use just like actual liquid slip that they have on hand. Um, that's great, nothing wrong with it. I just don't have any. So um, just using what I got, which is, you know, kind of what the video is about, using what I got. All right, 
So I want to make sure that that's a nice thin connection, or not thin, what am I saying, a nice secure connection. And then um, if I don't want that line there where I've been pressing, I can just smooth that out with my finger. I can even add more coils if I like. But now we've got a really nice secure connection. Um, now what I don't want to do is while this is only balancing on one side, I don't want to flip this over just yet. Um, but if I were to, you know, throw caution to the wind, if you're going to do any sort of picking up, you want to be very gentle with it so that you can expect, inspect the other side. So we can kind of let this balance if you want to. I don't, I prefer to put on another side first, but um, I just want to show you just how fragile this can be. But I can start sort of pushing this together very gently so that I have very little work to do later, but um, this is just still very fragile, so I'm, I'm not a terribly huge fan of, of you know, picking things up and, and fussing with them until I've got at least two or three sides on them. But some people just can't resist, so I wanted to at least, you know, show you how fragile that was. Now I'm gonna pick one of my uh, insides. I'm actually gonna pick the inside that has the pattern. So I've got my little end here. And again, we're gonna score all the bits Score, score, score. You have to say it too sometimes. That's that way it works. Score, score, score. I'm actually going to score. Um, I'm going to prepare uh, all of these ends. So remember, this is my bottom. I don't have to score that part. That's where the, the butter goes inside of. So I've got all my little corners scored. I'm going to get water again and slip. I could use the sponge. I could use my fingers. Oops, that's the top. Don't forget where your tops are. Save yourself some agony later on by not forgetting where things go. Um, now notice that I am putting them on the outside of my um, base. Uh, that's because that's how I measured. So make sure that in the beginning when you are measuring that you're paying attention to is my um, box, is my clay laying on top of the box or to the side of the box. Now the beveling also helps with that. I mean, the, the whole reason like it being on the side is allows me to do the beveling. If I was gonna put it on top like this, I might not actually do any beveling. Uh, that would just be flat score slip attach with no nothing additionally fancy going on there. So making sure that these are all together. And I'm gonna do my slipping. I tried really hard to, uh, I guess this is like confession time. I tried really hard to do um, the lid and the base in the same day, which is absolutely incredibly possible. Um, but I forgot to bring my charger with me. And so during filming of making the lid uh, two days ago, the, um, the, the camera or my phone died. <laughs> And I was like, oh, great. And it was like mid filming. So it totally didn't catch like any of the video that I had made. Um, and so I, I got to refilm it today. Uh, but yeah, so this is absolutely a thing that you can make all in one sitting. You can make the lid and the, the base together. And it's a little bit easier to do it that way. Um, if only because, you know, you can size things up and they dry together at the same size. Now, luckily I did my measuring and um, you know, I'm not concerned about this uh, being, you know, ill-fitting to my base. Just adding a little bitty bit of clay right there in this corner. There we go. But yeah, I'm not too concerned about things not fitting um, properly, but it's even better when you're working on them on the same day. Uh, just, just makes things a little bit easier for you. I think, but sometimes things don't happen that way. Uh, sometimes you forget your phone charger and then you have to leave the studio early. It happens. So, just squishing that clay right there in the middle of that crack. Make sure you're supporting from the back side. If you're not, it's just gonna create more holes. Check your work on the other side, looking good getting a little squishy, but that's okay. So corners looking good here. And so I like to work kind of in a 
it's a rectangle, but in a circular fashion, uh, just because it, um, you know, allows me a little bit more flexibility in terms of how I can get into my space. But now that we're putting on the third side, it's going to be, um, you know, a little bit less arm space available. So be aware of that, that you're going to start losing flexibility in your work. And are we, nope, we did that right. Okay. I'm just steadily losing my mind, wondering if I'm doing the right spots. Using a sponge this time, just for speed. But yeah, I think this will be a really cute piece in the end. You know, I don't really use butter dishes, but they're nice to put out for um, holidays and stuff when you've got family visiting. Um, it just looks pretty. Makes the butter nice and easy to pass around a table. But yeah, when I'm just at home, just me and my husband, not really a butter dish user. I just throw it on a plate which is, you know, we already made a plate, so that works too. So I could just use the plate that we made in the last one, not even worry about the lid. But it's up to you. You serve butter however you want to serve it. Just wetting more of these little coils, all these little bevels. You can see I'm kind of losing my mobility to really get in there. So I'm gonna start using that paintbrush as a uh, jamming tool for squishing some of these coils in where my fingers alone can't reach very easily. Um, this is the part, you know, when you start losing mobility to get in, this is where fingernails can really be a problem. And one of the reasons I wear gloves in studio is because I tend to try to keep my fingernails long-ish. Um, and so, it, it kind of adds a buffer for those nails um, so that they don't dig into my piece. Uh, I'm not saying that it still doesn't happen. I absolutely still can get fingernail uh, impressions caught into my clay with gloves on, but um, for the most part, it does help things significantly more than if I did not have them on. So those of you that like to try and keep long nails in the studio or even just medium nails, um, try using some gloves. See how that works for you. Uh, they need to be tight, tight to the skin, but they do add a nice little buffer for the clay, between the clay and the sharpness of the nail. So almost done with this side, and the last side's gonna be the most troublesome. And I just say troublesome, it just means you gotta focus. So, you know. Like up to this point, it's like, oh, yay, making a box, no big deal, having a good time. But once we get to this last side, um, a lot of it is going to be stuff you all probably won't be able to see. I'll try to turn it at an angle so that we can, visibility is maximum, but um, viewer visibility might be a bit tricky for you all just because it's, it's the end of the box. So everything looking good so far. I'm going to turn my board. Everything's lining up, looks great. Time to put on the very last square. Back to my tools, always misplacing my tools, even when they're just on the same table with me. Okay, oh, turn this guy too. And just do that real quick. And then some water and squish that together. Nice tight fit. Excellent. Make sure everything sets well. Very nice. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Squish all that in and then add my coils. So again, gonna be a little bit trickier now. So I'm just gonna try and get my coils to fit as best as I can. It's just 
really tricky. Also, my little scraps are getting dry, so they're kind of, I pick one up and they kind of crumble in my hands, which is um, not a big deal, but it's, it makes them really good once I can, if I can grab one and it just fell in the water. Um, once it's wet, it's fine, but it's just once, if they're all starting to dry out, making them tricky to pick up. There we go, put those coils in, and last coil, and then we're just going to brush those all together. And get those all nice and attached. There we go. All right, use that brush. Um, I'm going to be turning this so that I can actually see where I'm brushing. Um, just putting very little pressure. You don't need to use a whole lot of pressure with a, with a paintbrush. Um, just enough to let the clay move underneath it, but you don't want to, you know, create too deep of a pressure mark where you have, you know, been brushing. You don't want to dig into the clay too much. Um, actually, this is working out just fine. I'll turn it to myself in a minute because I know this one's got like kind of a big blob. So I'm going to use the other end to be just a tiny bit more forceful. You could use a pencil as well. Just something that kind of mimics a fingertip. There we go. Let's kind of clean that off just a little bit. There we go, very nice. Now if I really wanted to like add extra security to this, then I could take some pre-made liquid slip, um, let's say liquid slip, but like, so like this, this is dry goods plus um, wet to make liquid. So liquid slip would be like slip you've already pre-made and is wet. Um, and I could take some of that and really just go over each of these corners um, on the inside where I fused things together. And that would really make this incredibly secure. Um, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is this is good um, enough, honestly, in my opinion. Um, but all this, like if you had a bunch of like extra like of this liquidy stuff that's collecting on my, my brush here, I could even take some of that off, gather it with my brush and kind of push that in. Um, but you know, any sort of extra goodies you've got that you can push in while your piece is still wet and together uh, is a good thing. It's not bad to have that extra layer of wet slip in there um, to help protect your piece. I'm trying to jam a little bit of clay in this itty bitty corner. But yeah, you don't wanna have your piece too wet because it's been drying, you know, the moisture's evaporating um, and that can cause, you know, instead of rehydrating your piece, it can actually cause erosion and uh, we don't want our piece to erode, don't, that will fall apart from us. But here we are, here's our little box, and I can pick it up and, and it's not, you know, too bad. Um, but yeah, our little box is ready. You can see all the nice sealed insides. We're gonna flip it over now that it can really support its own weight. Um, you can see it's not perfectly even. That's okay, I'm not worried about that just yet. Um, we'll take care of that momentarily. But I'm gonna make sure on the other side now that I can get my corners all nice and pinched close together, I do not need to seal these with slip. Now I might run a little bit of a brush over them, but I'm just gonna make sure the inside is really well sealed. That's the key here, is that the inside is really well sealed. So these bevels are gonna come together really nicely as I just gently manipulate them together to make a box. Now uh, I had, you know, in the first video I had a rice paddle and I didn't use it at all. Um, I still have that rice paddle right here. Um, so let's say I didn't have a pattern on this, that I just made a, a smooth box. Um, the whole point of having a rice paddle is that then I could round this box off or put interesting texture on it with the rice paddle. Now, because I decided to use a pattern, I am not going to be rounding this off because any sort of pat that I do is gonna take away any of this paddle, or any of this patterning that I have. And I don't wanna do that. I wanna try and preserve as much of this pattern as possible. So this is gonna be a square butter dish, but you could make a rounded one just by paddling that. So you can see nice corners together. Here, I'm gonna add a little bit of that water and loosen that up, get that to press gently together. 
I want to try and disrupt my pattern as little as possible. So I'm going to just smoothen that along. Same thing for the other side. And like if I had, you know, if I had an actual beveling tool, I could have gotten a really sharp bevel and these probably would have connected a little bit more cleanly. But, you know, again, we're just using what we got. And there are ways to kind of hide areas that you don't like so much. So even if I do smooth out all these connections and I don't like it, I don't like how that, you know, smooth area looks, um, there are ways in which I can address that to make it part of the piece. So I can see how it's, it holds its own weight. That's the really great thing about a hard slab is that it can hold its own weight as long as you're not, you know, you're still supporting it. I'm still holding it very gently. I'm not letting it just sit there by itself without having any sort of hand available to help it stand. So just adding little bits of water where those outside seals are. And gently fusing all of that together. Making sure everything fits together nicely. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is that for this sort of outside structure that has been, um, you know, it's it's it has interrupted the pattern just a little bit, I'm gonna let that dry before I do anything with that. I'm gonna let that sit up a bit. Uh, so I'm just continuing to smooth out any areas that I want to have look, you know, that way. But these areas here where these connections, these bevels met and um, I have smoothed, I'm going to show you how to kind of, it won't be using the same pattern, but I'm going to show you how to put a pattern there. But otherwise this looks pretty good. So now I'm going to make sure that this is the shape that I want. Now um, if I tip this over on the other side, you can see this is not level, it's rocking a little bit. So there is a really great tool that I'm going to grab very quickly. Um, and in your home, it would be a cheese grater. Uh, here at VizArts, it's a um, texture tool. It, it, it does look like a cheese grater, but um, it is uh, actually meant for, I think it's drywall is what this is for. So this guy. So, but cheese grater works um, if you got little drywall tools too. Oops, let's not ruin the piece here. But I can take this and glide this along the top and it starts collecting all these little bitties and that way I can uh, level my piece out very nicely without having to worry about like cutting too severely onto my piece and get that nice and level and smooth so that everything can um, fit together nicely. And I can use my stencil here to check, am I level? So I know I'm not, I need to work on this side a little bit more. Um, if you have a level in your house, that's great too. Just need to bring this down. You can also like have this at eye level and uh, check, you know, visually. But to avoid like flopping your piece over and over repeatedly. I like to just do it by hand, feel it out. Let's see how we're doing. So I don't have to flip it over like this too much. Not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. Excellent. So <clears throat> I'm actually gonna hold it to my eye level now. So notice how like when I'm holding my piece, I'm kind of cradling it in the palm of my hand. Trying not to squeeze it too much. Just want to make sure that everything's looking good. Oh, and you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry. That's why I, another reason like the iPad's really nice is I can have it face towards me and see what I'm filming. Um, so that way I know kind of like what is what is, what are the viewers seeing right now and 
Um, if I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing, you're not seeing anything. <laughs> so there we go. This is not bad at all. Really nice. Excellent. Okay. So it sits really nicely. I'm very pleased. Just cleaning it up. Clean up my workspace. Another really great thing about newspapers, you can kind of roll everything up that's in it and just put it in your recycle bin or your disposal, wherever you're putting your stuff. Um, we're going to go ahead and bring over the base so that I can put these two pieces together and look at how nice they fit. Um, that's because it's measured, so you know, measuring's good. Um, so they fit really well together. Butter's going to fit in there very nicely even after the 10-12% shrink rate of the clay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove that now because I don't want them to potentially break each other. Because they are still fragile. Yes, I could fire them together that way, but I will not because, um, again, fragility. Um, and now that this is pretty good, I'm going to smooth out. Let me take my sponge wherever that ran off to. There it is. Take my sponge and smooth my edges so that they are nice and round and won't hurt anyone potentially. And you know, and this is just a real quick butter dish. Like, you know, everybody's gonna find, like, as an artist, you're gonna be like, oh, maybe I should fill in that corner more. You know, oh, I don't like the way the pattern sits on this. You know, like, the more you make, the more you figure out, like, the things you like, the things you don't like. Uh, so, you know, don't be afraid to make them, finish them, decide you don't like it, and do it again. Um, you know, that's the kind of nice thing about learning and, and practicing is, you know, you decide in the end what things work for you, what things don't. Uh, I encourage you to, you know, make multiples at one time. You might find on Butter Dish 3 uh, that there's something else that you really like about it that you want to start doing with the others. So, you know, don't, like, be, a lot of people get caught in the one and done, which is fine, if, you know, like, you don't have to, you know, make a whole bunch of butter dishes either. But when you do a one and done, uh, you know, if it breaks in the kiln for some reason, somebody drops it, um, you know, you don't have a backup. And so it's really good, if possible, to, um, you know, make a few at one time. I'm just kind of softening these edges here that I made in the bevel. I'm gonna soften that up here. Okay. Make sure all of my connections are solid. I will at some point be, oh, so that's a C again. I'm like not paying attention to what the video is seeing, so. I'm just, again, smoothing this out with a sponge, so didn't really miss anything in my opinion. Um, so making sure this sits level, really good. So with these little edges here that I have, um, there are a couple things that you can do. Uh, you can take, you know, your pencil, and I could make a firm bevel with it so that it at least blends with the bevel that I have going around the separation of the top here. So I'm gonna use my stencil as a straight edge and just line that up. Now you might see the blue from the pencil. Again, that's gonna burn out. It's wax. Colored pencils are made with wax. So it's just gonna burn away. And then I'm gonna use my finger to kind of solidify that, make sure it's even. Very nice. So now we've got something that's gonna kind of, you know, reflect through the piece and make the whole piece consistent. Is that nice little beveling going on. And that's just something I thought of on the fly. I was like, okay, what can I do to, you know, get these to come together? I could have put little dots in there if I wanted. You know, it's up to you what you feel is appropriate. And make sure that you're like holding, you know, you're supporting your piece through the whole process because the worst thing is like, oh, I'm gonna like just not move the piece and I'm gonna, you know, draw this line 
you know, with so that I don't have to move it. You know, put your piece on something that you can move the piece around. Um, otherwise, you know, you might end up using your tool in a way your body's not familiar with, and then you can end up messing up your piece. So like earlier, um, when I was cutting these squares out, these rectangles, I should say, um, the uh, I, I was using my knife instead of cutting, oh, see, like what I'm saying, like you gotta pay attention. Um, I almost cut through my bottom half of this. Um, I was using my knife instead of holding it and drawing towards my body, I started cutting away from my body and it, it cut a little bit crooked, um, which is not great when you're trying to make, you know, per, as precise shapes around a stencil as possible. So keep that in mind that, you know, use your tools in ways that you are familiar with them. Uh, try not to, you know, just do something that makes it, you know, like, oh, this might be easy if I don't turn my piece, but, you know, make sure that you can move your supplies in ways that you are comfortable with using them. Um, Otherwise, you can find yourself creating more trouble than you intended, which is no fun for anyone, especially not for you. So, drawing these lines up the side. These are short ones, so I don't feel like I need my stencil. Just a little one. And then once this is bone dry, I will, um, I will be, oh, sorry, this side's being a little bit fragile, so it's going in on itself. So hard slab does not mean it does not move. Hard slab just means it's a little bit firmer than the soft slab. Um, but this looks great. I'm, I'm really pleased. So you can see where I've beveled, but once it's dry, I'll sand it so that all connections are smooth. So where, those bl where that blue is right now, it will disappear and you'll just see the distinct sections broken down. Um, and this can be done. I could call this done. Um, what I like to do for things like this is because I'm going to let it, I could let it dry like this, but that's if I'm not doing a handle, which I am going to show you a handle. Um, if I'm not doing a handle, I can let it set up. This is the best way for this to dry actually is to have it laying like this. Um, but because I'm going to have a handle, I can't let it dry this way. So I'm going to make some shredded newspaper, um, in high school. We call this shredding bedding because I was part of the high school zoo committee. We had a little mini zoo um, of rats and chinchillas and snakes and rabbits and ferrets, and Madagascar hissing cockroaches. And I was, um, I took care of the rat cage and so we had to make shredding bedding out of newspaper. I'm going to tear some more up. And it's just using the you know, tear with the direction of the paper. And this, you know, I don't need this to be tight newspaper. It just needs to fill the box. And so what will happen is it will off, it will act like a little soft bed for the box to rest on while it's drying. Anyone making a box um, or anything that, you know, you want to sit and are afraid of it you know, collapsing under its weight. Highly recommend doing shredding bedding, um, cotton, if you have cotton available, uh, or like, um, pillow filler works really good too. Uh, foam is great too, just not um, as easy to, you know, manipulate into awkward shapes um, and not as easy to tear. But you can see just, I can fill this right up to the top. Little shredding bedding. And then I'm going to take my board, my stencil, flip this over, and then slide that right out from underneath very carefully. Again, making sure that this is the right way that I want it, lined up. Excellent, looks good. And now it's that shredding bedding is gonna be in there to help support the weight, like it's not, you know, it's not stuffed full, but it's enough newspaper that um, this will not sink down um, into its shape. Um, I, oh, there it is. Being a little bit um, careless with my um, little handle. So I made a little handle just out of some scrap clay. I had it mimic the corners of the um, base. It's been drying. It's almost too dry, but that's okay. I'm not worried about it. 
So I'm moistening it um, with my sponge, giving it, getting it really nice and juicy. I wanna decide where it's gonna go, like right here in the middle. And just kind of place it there, see if I like it. I really don't like it. I really am like, me and handles, like I have a love-hate relationship with handles. I love like making mugs. Mugs are my favorite thing to make. Um, but uh, anything else that has handles, I'm kind of like, mm, I don't know, like I don't really need a handle for this butter dish. Um, but uh, so I might end up not putting a handle on this at all um, because I'm really just not not feeling it. But the way to attach one is just like I'm attaching anything else. I want to make sure that this has a lot of moisture. I'd add a little bit of moisture where the attachment's going to be. Score it, score it, push it down together. And then because I've got this pattern on top, I would actually use my paintbrush to go along the outside to make sure that I got enough moisture to stick it together um, so that I didn't have to use any sort of additional coils. Um, now, if this was smooth, I could use coils and then you know, smooth that area out so that the handle and the, the box itself looked like they went together. Um, but I think just you know, for this piece, I'm, I'm not gonna put the handle on, which means I can dry this upside down, which is a lot better for the integrity of the box. Um, you know, I can keep the shredding bedding inside it's gonna help absorb moisture from the sides of the box, the inside of the box. So that way the inside and the outside of the box can uh, dry at the same ratio. But this, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, and, and those of you in between, um, they this is our box, which is gonna be our butter dish. I'm gonna go ahead and pick this up. You can see that now um, it has that nice curved side. Um, I can use my very gently put that down because it is bone dry. Push that aside here. And I can use my uh, grating tool now to, I'm just gonna pick these little boogers off on the end here. Use that grating tool to smooth out any rough edges if I want. I could also use the um, sponge very lightly because again, we don't wanna rehydrate this too much. So you can hear the difference that that is bone dry. And just gently smooth that out. But for the, the little corners here, I will use the, um, the sponge or the paintbrush very lightly. But just gonna get the bottom half of this, get any boogers off. Now, because this is so thin, ideally, um, if I was signing my name on this, um, which I'm not gonna worry about it, but if I was signing my name on this, I would have wanted to do it at the, the same kind of hard slab period uh, that this is at. Um, that's, in my opinion, the ideal time to sign your name. Um, but I'm gonna just take that paintbrush, gently work that into these little grooves. It's really delicate. Feel that out. I might grab this sponge, because the sponge, it can be just a little bit more intent. Paintbrush is fine, but it, doesn't always work for the ways that you want it to work. So I'm just gently letting, I'm not pushing the sponge very hard, just kind of letting the sponge fill in the gaps of the piece and then going up behind to feel it gently with my finger. Go along that side. Because again, if you add too much water, it's bad news bears, everyone. So you really want to be careful with when you're using a sponge on a bone dry piece. Um, that's really asking for erosion, which in, in, is what I'm actually purposefully doing right now is I do want to erode the clay to get it soft in these corners where, you know, trying to carve it out with a tool would be a little bit too much. Uh, but, you know, be very careful with depending on your piece and the shape your piece is in. Um, this, what I'm doing right now could be the end of your piece, honestly. Um, so you want to be very, very aware of what you're doing and how long you're doing it. Because see how you can see how the color is changing immediately. It dries very quickly. It's absorbing that water. But if I do this too much, um, it's just also taking clay up with it. But yeah, these are nice and soft now. They'll be very nice when glazed. And that's really the key is you just don't want to have any sharp edges. You want to make sure that nothing's going to hurt anyone because uh, all it takes is just a tiny bit, tiny bit of sharpness, um, and you can cut someone. Um, 
you know, with something that seems so innocent. So when you're making stuff to give to people or to sell, you really want to pay attention to those things. But that is it. We've got our dish, we've got our lid. They will be dried and bisque fired, and then uh, they'll be ready to glaze. So I don't know why I put that there where everybody couldn't see it, but I sure did. So um, here we are. Beautiful, lovely lace pattern on our stuff. Um, and again, it could be, you know, you could do whatever patterns you wanted uh, and or no pattern at all. You know, have fun with the glaze section. Uh, you know, at this point, you know, doing this at home, you're either hopefully you've got a kiln at home or you, you know someone who has a kiln um, or you're holding on to it until you can get it fired um, at your uh, ceramic studio of choice. But, um, you know, doing this, you, it's easy to make something at home while you're, uh, you know, waiting for people to discover vaccines for uh, pandemic viruses. So, um, but if you, for storage, you want to keep these, um, ideally once it's dry, um, I like to keep them with shredding bedding in a, like a Tupperware box, something that's not gonna, you know, be easily tossed around. Um, you don't want to just, you know, leave them out because they can, you know, create more dust and attract dust. Um, but also just that uh, they're fragile, super fragile. So be sure that wherever you're storing your ceramic pieces, that they are someplace safe until you can get them into the next pro part of the project. But uh, thanks for joining me on this adventure of making a butter dish uh, out of a slab box. And I hope that you found this mildly entertaining, um, hopefully educational. But uh, join me next time in my next video and take care and have a good one. Bye.